So now I'm working on putting together a bunch of topics that relate to measuring voltage within a circuit using a multimeter. So there used to be voltmeters where all they measured was voltage, but for the most part, it's so easy to measure voltage and other properties that now they cram them all into one meter for the most part. And uh, so in any case, this video, we're gonna focus on measuring the power supply directly. So now recently, I've been using this multimeter. I really love this multimeter, but unfortunately, I cannot find them on uh, Amazon or most other places. So every once in a while, they pop up. But uh, in any case, this is an auto ranging meter. All you have to do is set it to voltage. It does the rest. If you're gonna do alternating current, you set it to voltage, hit select until you see alternating current on there. Pretty straightforward. I think this can measure up to 600 volts. That's all you gotta do is set it to uh, voltage and have the red probe there. Red probe's always there unless you're measuring high current. For this video, we're gonna go to a meter that I bought after that one, but uh, right after I bought this one, they upgraded it. So I think the new version's an auto ranging meter, but uh, it also has oscilloscope functions, which we're not gonna look at. So this is not auto ranging, that's why I'm selecting this one. So I know we're, our first measurement's going to be one volt. So we need to stay above that. The lowest voltage setting for this is two volts. That will be the most accurate. You can go higher. You can go up to the 1000 volt setting and take a low voltage reading, but it won't be near as accurate. So for accuracy, you want to get the setting as close as possible. Again, it has the uh, voltage spot there and uh, for milliamps, we have to go there. That's also for capacitance. You move the black probe for capacitance. The uh, otherwise black probe stays there. And then the red probe for high current, you go over there. So there's more to this meter, but still, it's a uh, pretty simple once you understand how to use it. So we're gonna take the power supply and we're gonna measure the voltage directly. So the only real reason you would do this with the power supply, I'm do focusing my videos on these uh, bench power supplies, this is a portable one. Bench ones are usually larger, but uh, this fits on camera good. So you don't have to get this one. You can get a cheaper one that uh, is probably higher quality and uh, whatnot and cheaper, but uh, this is good for videos. So I'm going to hit the power. So the output is off. And one thing you'll notice, here's a good reason to measure the power supply voltage is that we actually have a negative voltage right here. So that's why the output is off. It actually outputs a negative voltage where the uh, red probe is more negative than the uh, black. Actually, I should say alligator clip right there. So now I'm gonna turn the uh, power on. So it's the power button. It doesn't turn the unit on or off. You actually have to unplug it. It just turns the output on or off. And there you can see that we have 0.991 volts. So almost uh, one volt and this display kind of goes erratic at one volt for some reason but in any case you can see here that uh, that's probably more accurate the uh, voltage than what's on the display there so we're gonna raise this and remember we set this to two volts and this should be pretty safe but you want to avoid it we're gonna go over two volts so it went out of limit and so we will set this to 20 volts and let's see what we got there, 199, and uh, that's also 199, so not too unaccurate. Let's go to a higher voltage, and there you can see now it says 2, it's not as accurate. And uh, that one, it's jumping to 3. So as you can see, the accuracy goes down, but still, you can measure that. You want to start with a high number if you're unsure of the voltage, so... That is the main takeaway. We can see what is actually being provided right there. So let's go back to uh, two volts for the most accuracy and uh, drop this to one. Now, what I'm gonna do is unclip the alligator clips and unplug these two plugs because those are wires. They have some resistance. And uh, let's go down. I'm just gonna jab the probes 
right into the slots there. So there's the red one, and there is the black one. And you can see, again, we have a 0.991 volts. So it doesn't look like we really had any voltage drop through the alligator clips. So now that took longer than I thought, so I'm going to try to speed up. Hope you still found it interesting. We're going to get to the main point of this video now that uh, we're running out of time. First off, you shouldn't leave the meter on all the time, and you shouldn't leave it at uh, the lowest setting either. So we got it at 2 volts. I'm just showing that if I hit power again for this meter, the backlight turns on. If I hit it once more, it turns off. You have to hold it down to turn it off. You should turn it off and set it to a high voltage when you're done. But... Uh, we're going to stick with that 2 volts here because I know the power supply is 1 volt. So, we looked at the voltage we're getting at the end of the alligator clips. Normally, I clip them to these uh, breadboard jumpers here. And I put the breadboard jumpers to the rail. So, we also have these breadboard jumpers going across here to this rail. So, that one's powered at 1 volt right now, as is that one because the uh, power supply is on. This is... And uh, when we wire this up, we should turn it off. But uh, we're dealing with such low voltage. This resistor gets really hot once uh, a significant amount of current goes through it. But it won't be too bad in this video. So this is only a 5 ohm resistor. That is the main takeaway. If we have too little resistance, this will actually shut off. It'll think it's a short circuit. But uh, five, 5 ohms with uh, 1 volt across it we should expect about 200 milliamps of current. So I set this up to one amp. And uh, that this will output. It will output up to one amp and then it won't output any more current. It will drop voltage as needed, but we won't probably run into that in this video. So one side of the resistor goes to positive, the other to negative. So it's a 10 watt resistor. That's why it's so large. And uh, the leads are bending in bad ways. There we go. So. That's the positive, that's the negative. Now, we're going to measure, let's turn the uh, power supply output on. You can see we're not at 200 milliamps. This isn't completely accurate, but it's pretty close. It's not too bad. Now we're going to measure the voltage across the resistor. So this is still the power supply voltage in a sense. And, uh, but we're going to see that we lost a lot of voltage. We're only at about 0.8 volts when before we were 0.8. 991 I believe and if we go closer this may go up a little bit and it looks like it did go up a little bit but we'll go right to the probes and now you're going to see it's a point nine so it's higher right there that's because this connection point has resistance even the wires have some resistance it's probably mostly the connection point so we got connection point connection point connection point and then connection point all of these add a tiny bit of resistance so most circuits basic electronics won't matter but this is a low uh, resistance component so all this little resistance is adding up to more resistance and so they're taking away some of the power some of the voltage from the uh, resistor here and if we have a large enough value capacitor that might uh, help let's see what this one does this is only 470 microfarad and uh, try to avoid Connecting it to the resistor, so that side has to be more negative. Let's see if that helps. And uh, one time it helped, and then the other time it didn't for some reason. And uh, so I'm not sure if that's a little bit higher. But in uh, any case, we are short the uh, the voltage. Whereas, I think it might have even made it worse. If I uh, remember, these get really hot. It's not even warm now, but uh, we're not putting much power through. But we will we'll yank this from the rail completely and uh, just connect the power supply directly to it. So if we have a situation where part of our circuit is not getting the voltage we expect, usually we kind of assume all these connections and wires have zero ohms of resistance, but they actually do have a tiny bit. So we may need bigger connectors or uh, and wires or just make another power path directly to the, uh, the problem point or something. We have to make some adjustment. But this is one reason why you might measure a power supply directly. So still, we're not getting the uh, uh, 0.991 anymore. It's still dropping a little bit, but now you can see we're up to 200 milliamps instead of whatever it was before, like 140. 
and uh, it's just kind of flickering because it doesn't really like one volt terribly well. We can up the uh, voltage there to uh, two volts and uh, so we'll be just shy of this two volt limit with the multimeter. Now you can see it's more stabilized plus we have twice the current there uh, point, uh, 0.4 so we can go up to five volts. This is ultimate max five volts and uh, 500 uh, I mean one amp through here five volts one amp but there you can see now it's uh, even closer to that two volts we'll set this to uh, 20 volts and then three so so this is actually probably a tiny bit more it's a 10 watt resistor but you want to keep it about uh, five watts and we're a little bit above five watts right now so in any case you can see that now it's closer to the voltage we set the three volts so it's overcoming the uh, resistance of the wires and we could even go to these now so it'll do better at uh, higher voltages and uh, hopefully yep not too hot that was just a brief period of time I would not have touched it if it had been sitting there longer and uh, I don't want to go into the slot there we go so now at this voltage, with all this wiring now, it's not going to do as good. So there you can see 2 volts, even though we have it set to 3 volts. We lost a lot of power. So this wiring will not work for uh, this resistor. We need heavier duty cables, probably not with the uh, alligator clips there, but uh, this, this other connection stuff. We can't have all that resistance. So this went on longer than I expected, but I still hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is a, a troubleshooting thing you'll notice problems in a circuit and uh, if you understand this and the tr uh, trouble with the circuit is related to this problem of the resistance headed to the load being more than you expect because the load uh, doesn't have much resistance itself and so any other resistance greatly impacts it then uh, if you're aware of this being a problem you'll know how to troubleshoot it a little bit better so Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.